Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 98, and I'd like to talk about diffraction gratings. Now, we already talked about how diffraction is the spreading out of a wave on the other side of an opening as long as the wavelength is about the same size as the opening. Well, that works with sound, that works with light, that works with all different frequencies of light depending upon their, their wavelengths. Well, what we can do is actually break apart the components of different colors of light, for example, white light, by putting it through a diffraction grating. So there's two ways to make a rainbow. You can make one using refraction. As long as you have a dispersive material, you can turn it at different rates because the light travels at different speeds inside of different materials. Or you can use a diffraction grating. Now, what's a diffraction grating? Basically, it's a series of very thin lines that could be of the order of thousands per inch. You basically send light through this grating and produce thousands of circular wave patterns. Well, the more circles you produce, the more interference that's occurring. And only the strongest waves survive. In fact, only the waves of the component colors will come out the other side. So if you look at a diffraction grating and you look at white light, you're going to see all the colors of the rainbow, not from refraction this time, but because of diffraction. And what's happening is you're having a battle between all these circular wave patterns and only the colors that make up the light are going to be visible on the other side. If you take a CD or a DVD and shine it into the light, CDs and DVDs have really small, thin, concentric circle patterns. And they're close enough that they can actually break apart the colors of light. So if you have a CD lying around, you could take it and, and oscillate it in your hand with the shiny side towards you, and you'll be able to see a rainbow pattern. If you're outside, you'll be able to do that and see all the colors of the rainbow. If you're inside and you have uh, incandescent bulbs, you'll be able to see all the colors of the rainbow. If you have fluorescent bulbs or halogen bulbs, it'll be what colors constitute the gases that are making that light be produced. So actually, that's a way that we can take um, different elements and see what they're made up of. We call it the bright line spectra of the elements. And if you remember from chemistry, every element has different um, patterns that are produced when electrons jump from higher to lower energy levels. Every time you look at an element, you're seeing the colors of light that are being released from the electrons jumping from higher states of excitedness to lower states or the ground state. When they do that, because every electron in the element has different jumps that it will make, it may not just jump from n equal 5 to n equal 1. It may jump from n equal 2 to n equal 1, n equal 5 to n equal 3, then n equal 2 then then to 1. You'll see different patterns that are produced. And every element has its own unique set of jumps that it takes. So what we can do is take a diffraction grating and look at elements and determine what element it is. So we could have an unknown element, look at the light being produced from that element, and see whether or not it's hydrogen or helium or argon or different elements like that. This is how scientists know what <clears throat> uh, elements make up different suns. So if we have a star and we have light coming from that star, we can observe it through a diffraction grating. And of course, you shouldn't look at the sunlight through a diffraction grating. It can damage your eyes. But if we put it through a computer, the computer will see the pattern that's produced. We know that hydrogen has a certain power pattern and helium has a certain pattern and all the different elements have their own pattern. So the computer can take out from that what elements they have. Now remember, different stars are traveling at different rates of speed away from us. So we have different shifts because of the Doppler effect. So the computer has to take that into account as well. So not only do we have to worry about what elements are made up uh, inside the, the different starlight, but also what um, speed it's traveling away from us. So there's a lot of science that goes into astronomy that deals with diffraction. So we can actually use diffraction gratings to determine what elements we have. We could look at um, hydrogen or helium or argon gas and see the pattern that's being produced. You're literally viewing the electrons jumping from higher to lower energy levels. If you have a halogen light bulb or fluorescent light at home, you're seeing the gas that's making up that halogen bulb, um, and you're able to see the effects of all the different um, gases, the electrons being exciting and jumping to a lower energy level. 
incandescent bulbs basically use um, the resistance of the filament and the friction between the electrons traveling through the filament, typically made of tungsten. There is argon gas in most incandescent light bulbs, and that's so that it's inert and doesn't react with the air and, and break quickly. One of the big um, breakthroughs that Edison had when making his incandescent light bulb was filling it with argon gas, which was inert, and it allowed the light bulb to last a lot longer. So using diffraction, we can actually see the fingerprints of the elements and see what elements make up different light. Astronomers use that every day when they're trying to see what stars um, are made up of. Uh, typically, we have fusion reactions, so you have hydrogen as the fuel. But over time, that hydrogen is going to form into different elements, and those elements will um, be bigger. You know, hydrogen turns to helium and, and larger elements from there. Um, and when they can actually determine how much energy or how much fuel um, the sun has left <clears throat> for its fusion reaction. So it's uh, important that diffraction is something that's not just for an introductory physics course, but astronomers use it to determine um, how stars behave as well. So that's what a diffraction grating is, and it's good for um, observing the uh, elemental fingerprints, or what you called in chemistry the fingerprint of the elements, the bright line spectra. Thank you. Now, diffraction grading will allow us to separate light oop, into its components. We use it to determine what elements are included in light coming from the sun or other, other stars. Um, it allows us to use the bright line spectra. Now, one way we can do that is a, simply at home. You could just take a CD and, or a DVD, and you can use it as almost a mirror. If you shake it or oscillate it inside a light source, you'll see that there's a pattern produced that looks like a rainbow. Depending upon the light source, if it's white light, it'll produce a full spectrum. And that's because of the concentric rings around the CD or the DVD. Of course, the CD, the lines are spread out, DVD is a little tighter together. But effectively, what you have are these concentric rings, which acts, and this is obviously not to scale, this is much larger, it acts as the diffraction grating. So the light's going to hit that. It's going to separate into multiple little baby waves. Those base, So if I'm holding the CD this way, vertically, here's the CD. The light ray is going to hit, bounce back, and it's going to separate into its components. So these baby waves that are interfering with each other, all these circular wave patterns, I can't even draw that many, but what will happen is you'll have red, you'll have orange, you'll have yellow, you'll have green, you'll have blue and you'll have violet. So you'll have all the different colors coming from the white light. With that said, I could show you a diffraction grating with a single color like I did before. And if I were to shine this into the diffraction grating here, and I'm holding it at an angle so you could see it clearly, so that's why we're getting non-uniform looking dots, what you'll see is that single beam is turning into multiple beams. If I change how far away I am from the laser, it's going to change how the pattern is. Increase my distance, I'm increasing my pattern. We could use the diffraction equation if we wanted, but this is showing how the interference, single light wave, is turning into multiple interference patterns because of all the interference. So diffraction gratings, if we had an element, we could actually break it up into its fingerprint which would determine what element we have because every element has its own unique set of lines that it produces because of the electron configuration. So that's a diffraction grating. It can be used to separate light into components. So diffraction can be used to create a rainbow and also refraction, but refraction is because of dispersion. The fact that every um, frequency travels at a different speed inside certain materials. Of course, you don't see rainbows in regular air, you have to have water droplets in it. Um, and that's because air and a vacuum are non-dispersive. So every frequency travels at the same speed inside a, in air or in, in a vacuum.